stand by me. Thank you for coming out to the Wild Chain for Mayor kickoff party. Good evening, folks. London Free Press, AM 980, CJBK. I'm telling you, is this a gathering or is this a gathering? <laughs> Thank you for taking the time from your busy schedule to come out to hear what is the alternative to the three. Many of you have checked this candidate out thoroughly from our website. An informed voter is the best voter for London, whatever your decision. Paul Cash, Bill Fellner, Jennifer Gray, Rob McIntosh, Tony Arts, Jim Lister, Malcolm Millar, Gary Manning, he couldn't make it tonight. Please stand up and be acknowledged. That's our team. We were glued to the radio Friday afternoon and the three candidates were invited to AM 980, uh, the 1.30 to 3 o'clock show, Andy Lawton. They were debating, and Paul Cash and I were, were sitting at the office, just glued to the radio, just thinking. I was expecting thunderbolt and lightning rods. I was expecting all inspiring information that will rejuvenate the faith of London that will rejuvenate the faith of voters. This is what I want to do, and here's why I want to do it, and how I'm going to do it. I thought they might shed wisdom to London's future, but what I heard was whimper and regurgitation. Regurgitation without thought. Rehearsed, same old, same old. Same talking points about the Integrity Commission, Ombudsman, garbage schedule and listening to the experts. Those are the pillars of your foundation. Number one, to run for office, you're either honest or you're not. There's no 95% honesty and 5% crookedness. As mayor, leader of our city, public image to the world, you have to be cleaner than clean. As Chip Martin asked me at the end of our uh, interview about in April, is there anything else you want to tell us? I replied, well, I don't drink. I don't do drugs. We have one closet in the house, and my sweetheart has that full of her clothes. So I got no closet to hide in. For the three to even consider having an ombudsman, integrity commissioner, means to my eyes, you are not sure of your moral compass. As mentioned, honesty, you are either 100% or zero. There's no gray area to my mind. Number two, garbage schedule. Is that what it takes to build a world-class city? <laughs> garbage schedule. Why didn't you propose that 10 years ago? Will that bring jobs to London? Does that inspire confidence? to chairman of any major or minor international company. Is that the best you got? Three, another candidate mentioned listening to the experts. Where is your independent thinking? Where is your independent thinking? I have to emphasize that again, independent. Are those the same experts that are repairing the Spring Bank Dam that you're relying on after nine years? Are those the same experts that are repairing the high-grade water reservoir at our expense three years late? Whatever is leading these debates, they're channeling our attention to exact local issues where they talk for Fanshawe or against Fanshawe without ever talking substance. What is the assessed value of the property? Was there ever any other buyer? What was the competing price? Was it ever an appraisal like regular commercial transactions that we, the public, are used to? If there is an appraisal, why was it not disclosed? If there was no appraisal, why not? Why is it a secret? It's a private transaction, you say. Okay, well, if we, as a taxpayer, are going to fork over 10, 20, maybe 30, maybe more million dollars, we are sure as heck going to find out. I want to know. 
How did we arrive at the $70 million figure? Was there a public tender? Where is the preliminary engineering study? <coughs> Surely, there must be one. What's the cost breakdown? Tell us, please. And when does the council ever move so fast? Our firemen have no contract for three, four years. And yet these councillors will consider Fanshawe's request for $10 million overnight. That's true. By channeling our attention, deliberate or otherwise, to what these three want to talk about, they are hoping to draw your attention away from their past performance for the past four, eight, twelve years. They have the experience in council, but what has that gotten us? None of this would have happened <clears throat> if Fanshawe had allowed me to speak to their students last year. I wrote Dean Rundle of Fanshawe January 2013. I offered to talk to their students to offer an alternative view of the employment picture of the world. Global companies are looking, no, searching for quality candidates. And I wanted students to consider studying subjects that is or will be in demand after they graduate. I emailed from Saudi Arabia, no response. I sent a letter from Damam International Hotel with the hotel letterhead and the fancy stamps, <clears throat> no response. <coughs> Upon return to London, I hand delivered a letter to the dean's office again. They emailed back saying, it's near the end of the school term, why don't you call us in the fall? I contacted them in the fall, no reply. Then it dawned on me, they don't want to talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a slow learner, but I don't Our standard of living is falling. Jobs are being taken away from us bit by bit. Yeah, our city leaders are bickering, grandstanding, and indignant at being insulted. These guys don't have our best interests at heart. They're not leaders who will bring London out of the 1960s. So in March, I submitted my resignation. In, in part, it reads, My dear Saeed, it is with deep, deep regret that I wish to submit my resignation. I love working for Aramco, but I, I love my country even more. London, Ontario, Canada has the highest property tax, the highest unemployment rate, drugs, and welfare. Mayor of London, Joe Fontana, has been charged by the police with fraud. This was uh, middle of March. My sweetheart tells me I am crazy to waste my time running for mayor. She did tell me that too. <laughs> <clears throat> but the people of London, Ontario, Canada have been very good to my family and I. I owe a sense of duty to repay this debt by helping London become prosperous again. My manager drove two hours in the desert to see me. I was surprised to see him. The security didn't tell me he was coming, but he overruled me and the security guard, so he can come in whenever he pleases. First thing he said to me was, Paul, are you angry? Are you mad at something? Tell me. I said, no, sir, I'm not mad at anything. He understood my motives because many other countries do not get the chance to vote. He refused my resignation. He said, take a holiday, come back and tell me a different answer. Upon return to Canada in April 2014, I filed <coughs> papers with City Hall to run. I went back to Saudi Arabia the following month, I told Saeed, my decision remains the same. He understood and wished me the best. As a kid, my best times were in London, Ontario. We didn't have a care in the world. We were poor, but our mom and dad made sure there were food on the kitchen table, clean clothes for school, a TV to watch, and a couch that we bought from Salvation Army that all four of us could sit together. Our family was rich beyond average. We just didn't know we were poor. My first job in London at the age of 13 was delivering newspapers for the London Free Press in 69. My first Canadian winter, it was in February. It was a howling blizzard. I still remember looking out the window and seeing the snow blow. I thought, well, I better get used to this because this is a regular winter and that's the way it's going to be. Another kid and I were the only two in the city of London who delivered papers that morning. The free press gave us a $2 bonus for that week. <laughs> and a lady on Regent Street also gave me $2 bonus for that week. Another job was picking dew worms. 3 to 6 a.m. at the golf course. 
I don't know if any of you remember doing that as a kid. Yeah, you know how it's like. They advertised about $10, they paid $10 for a bucket full of doer. I thought, wow, this is easy money. <laughs> All you gotta do is scoop the worm in the bucket and there's 10 bucks. But little did we know, worms were smart. They sense vibration. So for two nights' work, my grand total paycheck was about a dollar thirty. Dollars. <laughs> that was my impression as a child in London. I left home after two sec second year university because I couldn't find work in London. I drove out west, worked all over Canada, then Algeria, China, offshore Peru, North Dakota, and Saudi Arabia. I work overseas and return to London every other month. I see the world advance in real time. Third world countries are modernizing while we are stagnating. We are stuck in the 1960s. Segments of London remains in their belief that we have London life and Canada trust. I'm told time and time again that London doesn't go up, but it doesn't go down much, economically. This last recession showed us all that London is very vulnerable to global forces. We are part of the global village, whether we like it or not. My job as Mayor of London is to instill basic, good corporate governance. Is that such a hard concept that, that we have? We don't have that in City Hall. <coughs> Accountability with measured metrics. Taxes are the sole point with all. There are the taxpayers and there are groups who demand payment. I'm not a cutter. I will increase money to segments who need help. But I want to know what we are getting for our money. Is that so bad? Or are those groups entitled to receive money without accountability? Never. Accountability with measurable metrics, performance is a fair requirement for all. I want City Hall folks to know that as mayor, I will not fire anyone nor change any contract that was negotiated and signed, no matter how it reaches. It was signed in good faith. I will honor that. I don't want that man or woman going home worrying that they might lose their job. I will not have any worker go home in fear. But when it comes time to negotiate, that's a different story. My push is, is for accountability. I want to know dollar for dollar, what do we get for our money? How efficient or inefficient compared to other cities? Whatever the situation, let's start from there. No recriminations. I don't care. I don't care who or what was to blame in the past. My first day as mayor, we start with a clean slate. My job is to bring London into the 21st century. I want London to be modern, cosmopolitan, council and city managers so efficient that other cities come to us for solutions. They come to London to emulate and ask and learn from us. I want London to punch above a weight class. Is that so bad? Reaching to be the best in our class. It's a race to the top in every respect. We cannot afford to be in the race to the bottom. We are not geared to compete in that direction. Is that a tall, tall order, you say? You bet. We are in the race of our lives. Your lifestyle and my lifestyle is secure. But it is your children and your grandchildren's lifestyle and standard of living that we are fighting for. That is why I'm running. I'm ringing the alarm bell as loud and as hard as I could possibly muster my energy. Our message is sound. Your candidate is true. Our job, yours and mine, is to spread this message of accountability, modernization, job retention, and job creation as far and as hard as we could. Thank you.